Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Mika, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that is the most requested that I get just about just about every video. They'll ask me besides what boot camp did I attend, but the one thing that they want to know is about resumes. A couple of people have already asked me about can I give them the template to my resume and all of that. So in today's video, we're going to be covering a data analyst resume that is basically ATS friendly and also it's going to be a resume that is geared more towards people who have no prior IT experience. That's the vast majority of my community where they're either aspiring to be a data analysts or changing careers or they're already in um, some sort of training and they're learning and so that's the reason why I went ahead and put this video out. So that way well, you knew exactly what step to get to. So now we're on the resume part of that video. And so what I'm going to do is basically show you exactly how you can actually write your resume and in what order. And then also to make sure that it doesn't get kicked back through the ATS system. Um, and so that it does give you a fighting chance. And so you're probably saying, I don't really know how to write my resume because I don't have any prior experience. And that is what we're going to cover today. There will be timestamps down below. So if you want to know, if you want to jump to certain parts of the video, you can definitely do that. The document that I am actually going to be sharing in this video will be linked in the description down, um, box below and as well as a template that you can use. All right. I know that your time is valuable and a lot of you guys love it um, that I'm straight to the point so you already know what I'm about to say let's jump right into it so now you already know like the typical resume has like your header at the top your professional summary work history and then you have your skills and then it has like your education slash certifications and all of that but for us because we do not have prior experience our resume has to be crafted a little bit differently in order for us to be able to stand out amongst the people in addition to the people that are actually who do have experience just because you don't have any prior experience that does not mean that you cannot get a job in this field because guess what we all started off with no experience at some point Point. The one thing is you have to understand about resumes is that resumes are the first thing they see before they see you. So you know how they say you only get one opportunity to make a first impression. Well, your resume is there to make that first impression for you. So they're going to see that before they see you. So your resume has to be very clean, very professional, very neat, no typos, no grammatical errors, none of that. It needs to be spot on. Now, the thing with that is, is that you want to make sure that your resume is ATS friendly because have you ever went, um, have you ever applied for a job before and then maybe like an hour after you applied, you already got an email that says, sorry, we ended up going with someone else or you were not chosen to move forward or whatever. And you're like, I haven't even spoken to anyone. So my thing is, is that they use an ATS system. And so if your resume is not ATS friendly, if they find these little quirk, these little quirky things that we're going to talk about in the resume, that ATS system will kick it back and you will get an automatic denial before we start okay and I'm gonna put this on the screen before we start avoid fancy designs okay so when you're dealing with ATS avoid fancy designs images tables columns or text boxes um, ATS may not read them properly and so what I mean by that is a lot of you guys like to put your picture on your resume and you're all like or you're you know, and, and that's great. Um, that's wonderful. But you don't want to add like pictures or graphics or anything like that on your resume. And here's the reason why. ATS can't read images. It only scans text. So a lot of times when you see resumes with pictures and different types of icons and things like that um, on there, it will kick it back because it cannot read that. It can only read text. Um, some companies automatically discard resumes with, um, with your picture on there because they're trying not to be biased multiple columns so some of you guys see those resumes with multiple columns don't utilize these type of resumes okay some ATS systems can only scan left to right meaning content in the second column might not be uh just may be ignored I've seen some resumes where they have like tables charts and, <laughs> and and line graphs and trends and you'll be surprised the amount of resumes that I have seen in my years and so then you have like these fancy designs custom fonts and unusual formatting I don't even really particularly like links on my resume unless it is a portfolio link um, but ATS prefers standard fonts like Arial, Calibri or Times New Roman now that we have our don'ts 
let's go ahead and begin with the resume. So every single resume needs a header, but we do not include the actual header. So do not insert a header. You're just going to basically just start typing. Don't include a header nor a footer because the ATS system finds it very hard to read that. All right, so for your header, include your first name and your last name. You want to also include your city and state only. You do not need your full address. Why are you sending random people? You do not know your full address. Email and LinkedIn. So you want to include your email and you want to include your LinkedIn. What we're going to do is we're not going to make your email nor your LinkedIn a hyperlink because we're going to also include a portfolio. The portfolio is actually going to be a hyperlink. Your email and your LinkedIn and all of that will be hyperlinked or maybe a link inside of your portfolio. And then also include your phone number. It is okay to add the role that you are seeking at the top of your new resume because that will make your resume stand out a lot. Um, what you're going to see next right after the header is going to be your professional summary. So your professional front summary needs to be very short, anywhere between two to four sentences, introduction at the top of your resume that highlights who you are, what skills you bring, and then your career goals. So since you don't have direct experience in data analytics, focus on transferable skills, relevant coursework, projects, and your motivation for transitioning into the field. So let me tell you how to structure it. So the way you're going to structure it is you're going to start with your background, then transferable skills, mentioning of your coursework, projects, and, and other things like that, and certifications, and then your goals. That's going to be the way you're going to structure it within two to four sentences. Now, I gave you some few examples. You're welcome. Examples of professional summaries for beginners. So example number one. So this is going to be a professional summary for someone who is a who's career transition from another field. Detailed oriented professional with a strong background in problem solving and critical thinking. Now transitioning into data analytics, skilled in Excel, SQL and data visualization tools like Power BI, completed hands on projects analyzing real world data sets, showcasing a data driven approach to decision making eager to leverage analytical skills and insights to help businesses drive data informed decisions. Maybe you just graduated from a, um, a university or maybe you just finished um, a couple of night classes or maybe uh, you finished a boot camp. So then this is how your professional summary should sound something similar to this. Motivated aspiring data analysts with a passion for uncovering insights through data. Recently completed a data analytics pro, uh, bootcamp. Gaining proficiency in SQL, Excel, and Power BI, or Tableau, or whatever it is, or Python, it doesn't have to be SQL, whatever floats your boat. Again, make it your own. Developed hands-on projects analyzing sales and customer, um, customer trends. Excited to apply analytical skills and attention to detail to solve business pro, um, problems and support data-driven decision-making. Let's say, for instance, you were self-taught, no formal education in a data analytics world, maybe you just took a Google certification and called it a day. Then this will be something for you. Analytical thinker with a strong foundation in problem solving. Now transitioning into data analytics, self-taught in SQL, Excel, and data visualization tools with hands-on experience through personal projects, analyzing real-world data sets. Passionate about using data to drive strategic business decisions and looking for opportunities to apply analytical skills in a professional setting. Okay, again, this document will be available to you. Please do not try to copy these word for word because what we don't want is a bunch of people out here applying for jobs and they all have the same professional summary. Again, make it your own people, okay? All right, and so then as you can see, your professional summary goes exactly right underneath the header. So then we're going to add this section. You can title it projects or you can title it data analytics projects. This is where you want to pretty much highlight all of the coursework you've done, every project you've created. If you don't have prior experience in data analytics, projects are the best way to showcase your skills. Instead of a professional experience section, create a project or data analytics project section to demonstrate your ability to work with data. It is important that you include this information. 
Now, just because you have never worked in the actual field itself and you didn't work in an actual building, that does not mean you don't have experience. Every day that you're building and working on your project, you're enhancing your skills and your knowledge when it comes to creating dashboards and reports. So you do have experience in it. You do have skills working with Excel because you've been critiquing it and working it. Your knowledge, your skills, and your experience is something that you create is something that you constantly work on and build on no one can take your experience away from you okay so don't be afraid to go in there and saying that you have skills and you have your experience in building projects because you have you've been sitting at home working on creating your portfolios and working on projects to put into your portfolio that's skills that's experience you might have spent six months working on that that's what you're going to sell so Inside of your data analytics project section, you're going to include the project title, tools that you use, objective, and key insights and impacts. Okay, this is kind of sort of like your portfolio. <laughs> okay, your portfolio will have all of this. Okay, that's what you're going to include. Your project title gives a clear and professional name. Um, the tools that you use is important because when you're creating projects, they want to know the tools that you've used. So if you had to use SQL at some point, add it. If you had to use DAX queries, add it. Whatever tools you had to use in order to create this project or your project, listed those are the tools that you use in order to make it happen it's kind of like writing a recipe alrighty so that's how you're gonna look at it when you says tools use what of everything that you use in order to make that pan of cornbread or whatever okay so whatever dish that you were making so that's the tools that you use it's going to be the ingredients that you use in order to make what you brought to the table objective what was the whole point? What was the objective of you creating this project? Alrighty, so you're gonna briefly explain the problem and what you analyzed, okay? And then key insights and impacts. Summarize your finding and how they could be applied in business settings. So here's an example of your project section. So let's say for instance, you have a sales dashboard and but you're gonna title it sales dashboard in Power BI or in Tableau, whatever visualization BI tool that you use. So you gave it a name and then we're going to say built in um, an interactive dashboard using Power BI to analyze sales trends, cleaned and transformed raw, um, raw data using Power Query to, and then created visual, um, created visualizations to track revenue and product performance. Now, if you're saying um, I have not created any projects yet or anything like that, I'm going to tell you, create you a project first before you start creating your resume because you need something to put on your resume. And then that way, when you go to interviews, you have a project that you can show. And then also you can put that project inside of a portfolio. And again, I'm going to create a video on how to create a portfolio and what all goes into the portfolio. So if that is something you're interested in, put down in the comments down below portfolio. And that way I know to go ahead and start moving on that, um, on that video real soon. Like if you're trying to transition now, start thinking like a data analyst now. Start training yourself on how you can take the data that you currently have right now and start making projects off the data that you have. And right now you're working in your day to day, start tracking some of the things that you do on a daily and then create projects based on what you currently do right now and start looking at what are some of the trends that you're seeing on a daily. And so your data analytics projects will go right underneath the professional summary along with your experience if you have any. So that will go there. Now, the next thing is going to be your technical skills. So your technical skills, soft skills is going to go right underneath that. So um, normally they would say that you want to put your technical skills at the top, but I don't encourage that. I want your projects to be the first thing they see right underneath your professional summary, then start talking about your technical skills. It's like you created all of this. Now I can see what technical skills you have. What can you bring to the table? So if you don't have direct experience in data analytics, highlighting your technical and soft skills is crucial to show employers that you have the foundation and potential potential to succeed in the role. So you want to demonstrate your readiness to learn and apply skills. Even if you haven't worked in a data role, showcasing technical skills such as SQL, Excel, Power BI, etc. proves you're actively developing, um, developing the right expertise. That's why I said start working on it now. And then shows employers 
um, your transferable skills. So soft skills like problem solving, communication, critical thinking are just as important as technical abilities in data analytics. Employers want to want an analyst who can interpret data and explain findings to non-technical stakeholders. So the way you don't want to put your, tra uh, your transferable skills in a table, again, we don't want to put them in a table like this, but what you want to do is display it like this. So like an example can be like SQL, Power BI, Excel, Python, data visualization, data cleaning, reporting and dashboards, like all of that stuff can go there. And then the last thing we're going to do is going to be like education certifications and license. This is important. So if you have any type of licenses, certifications, education, add it there. So when it comes to your education, um, you can put down like a Google data analytics certification. So you can do that. You can put down your SQL for data science. This is my thing. If you go to a boot camp, you can put down a boot camp and you can put down the name of the school for the boot camp, but I'm don't if you just recently graduated, don't put that on there. Because don't. Don't put that on there. And if you just graduated in January of 2025, do not put on your resume January of 2025. You can put the name of the boot camp and what you studied in, but please do not. I am asking you, do not put the year you graduated from that boot camp. So that is the entire resume. These are the five things that you need on your resume. Right, the five things you need and it can all fit on one page alrighty so my thing is is that I've told you what you need to have on there and what does not need to be on there and I would love 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 to see you guys create these resumes so down in the description below the document that I just went over again in this video is down in the description box below um, also because I also help with resumes and then also there will be a template for you to be able to use so that way you can use this uh, you can use this to create your very own resume alrighty okay I know that, that seemed like it was a lot and if you do have any more questions or any more comments or concerns you can definitely post that down in the comments down below and I will try to get as many of you guys as questions answered again there will be a video coming soon about portfolio if you're interested in that just write the word portfolio and I will definitely make a video on how to create a portfolio so again guys I do hope that this video helps you out a lot I hope that it gives you everything you need again the document has had this video linked to it so if you get the if you get the document that I just shared in this video you need to go back to see what I said about this particular section click on the video link inside the document and you should be able to come back it takes you back to this video um I thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye